Hey guys, I'm still working on revamping rooms in my house by building new pieces of furniture. Last time I built a new kitchen table and today I'm building a new coffee table. So here is my current coffee table. I love it. It was about $40 to build. I will add the free plans in the description box below. The only issue I have with this table right now and what's leading me to build a new one is my puppy. She has completely chewed the pieces and the edges. I've tried to fix it. You can see where I went and sanded it and tried to fix it, but it is just beyond repair at this point. So now it's time to head to the shop and get busy building. So here is the design of the new coffee table. It has two by six legs. It's got a laminated pine top with trim around it, and the design feature on it is that you can see the top of the legs from the top of the coffee table. But I've doubled up the two by six to make it nice and chunky. Overall, I think the total cost in lumber was $90. I've already cut my lumber to size and I've ripped the two by fours down to three inches and the two by sixes down to five inches. It's not a necessary step, but alter the plans if you're not gonna rip your edges. So next step is to drill all my pocket holes and I put exactly where the pocket holes need to go in the cut list in the printable plans and you can download those in the description box below. So I'm using my foreman to drill these pocket holes. You can use your K5, you can use your R3, whatever pocket hole jig you have. I like this because I do build a lot. If you build and sell your furniture, it's a great tool to have. It does cost about three times the price of the regular K5. It does the exact same thing. It just makes it faster to drill your pocket holes. But if you're just building furniture for around your house for yourself, the K5 is great. So the first thing that I'm doing is assembling the base and I'm starting by doing that with the long runner that's on the bottom and I'm gonna attach it to two of the side legs. I want the pocket holes to face down on this. And I've drilled one and a half inch pocket holes on each end and they're gonna attach to the legs just like this with two and a half inch pocket hole screws and wood glue. Just love a new bottle of glue. And when I'm attaching these, I am making sure that the pretty side of the two by six is facing out, because that's what you'll see. Okay, so this is the first part of the base. Pocket holes face down. And then we're gonna have the two short runners coming this way with the legs on the side. So I'm gonna work on that now. So I'm marking 17 and a quarter from the edge of the legs because that will be center for the short runners. And I've got that on the plans. And again, I've got pocket holes facing down and I've drilled one and a half inch pocket holes into each end and I'm attaching them to the long runner with two and a half inch pocket hole screws and wood glue. If you build this and figure out an easier way to attach the second piece, let me know. Let me know in the comments. Pause for dogs. Hey, hush. Okay, so I've got the short runners on. Now I need to add the other two legs. I'm trying to figure out the best way to set this while I do that. Probably like that. level but remember I'm going to add extra pieces to make it thicker. Okay so I'm adding my second long runner and I'm attaching it to the first runner piece with wood glue and two inch brad nails. If you don't have brad nails you can use finish nails, you can use just a hammer and nails if you need to. I'm going to slide it right in there and I'm layering these two by sixes to give the base an extra chunky look. And I'm just following up with two inch brad nails. So second long runner's done. Now I'm going to attach the two shorter runners the exact same way. 
right, I've got all of my runners and all of my legs attached. Now I'm going to go back and add the second layer for each leg. And those are just two by sixes that I've also ripped down. I've drilled three quarter inch pocket holes on one end. That end is going to face inside so we can access that. And they're gonna be up so that I can attach that tabletop. And I'm attaching in the same way. I'm gonna use wood glue and two inch brad nails. Okay, I've got the base completely assembled. I'm gonna set that aside and start working on the top. Now it's time to build the top. The top I'm using laminated project panels. And I'm doing that because I was gonna use plywood, but with the cost of lumber crazy right now, this was a more affordable option because I didn't need an entire sheet. So I would have had a lot of waste and paid for material I didn't need. So I cut these down to size and I'm going to join the two pieces together. I've drilled three quarter inch pocket holes all the way around and I'm attaching them using one and a quarter inch pocket hole screws. Can you hear my ferocious Frenchie guard dog? We build these really great workbenches and then I always end up on the ground still. It's just easier for me and probably have it. All right, both these boards are attached. Now it's time to bring the base over and attach that to the tabletop. So right now I'm just centering the top up. So I'm marking center on the top of each leg. So I'm lining everything up and making sure that the legs are center and I'm attaching the top to those short legs with one and a quarter inch pocket hole screws. And now I'm going to run the support runner across the top of the base and the bottom of the tabletop. And this is just a two by four that I've ripped down to three inches wide. I've got one and a half inch pocket holes at both ends. And I'm just going to center this over the seam between the two pieces that make the top of the table. And I'm going to attach it with nails going from the top into the base and I'm going to attach it with two and a half inch pocket hole screws into the legs. And this is just going to add extra support to the tabletop. You know, if you've got any littles that like to sit and play video games on top of your coffee table, no worries, it will be strong enough to support their booties. Okay, I'm loving how this is going to look. Now all I have to do is cut this trim down to size and this table is done. So I've got my first trim piece cut, and this is just, my trim is just two by fours that I've ripped to three inches wide. Each end is gonna be square on one end, and it's gonna have a 45 degree angle on the other end, so we can have nice mitered edges. And I'm gonna drill one and a half inch pocket holes on the square end so that I can attach it to the legs. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just dry fitting my pieces so that I can go back and attach them. Now, we get the question all the time, how do you get the right angle cuts, miter cuts? So what I do is measure and cut as I go. So I'm holding this two by four up to the leg and I'm gonna go right where this corner ends and I'm gonna make a mark. And I always make my mark go the direction that I need my saw to cut that miter so that I know. And then I just take it over to my saw and make the 45 degree cut. So I've got all my trim pieces cut now and I have drilled one and a half inch pocket holes at the square end of each piece. Those I'm gonna use to attach to the legs right here so it all looks like one big piece dying into the legs. When you drill these pocket holes, you wanna make sure that you leave at least an inch from the top of each one so that you can access those pocket holes. I'll make sure that I note that on the plans, but if it's too far this way, you're not gonna be able to access it because the tabletop will be in the way. So I'm attaching these trim pieces with two and a half inch pocket hole screws and wood glue, and I'm gonna go back and 
use finish nails around the top edge to secure it really good to the tabletop. I'm trying to figure out the best way to do this because I want to put it up on its side, but I've got all my pieces already lined up, so I'm going to try it this way first. Okay, that's easy enough. So I've got the first piece attached with the legs and actually, stand by. I'm just going to make this work. I need to turn this upside. So I think it's going to be easier for me to attach the trim if it is upside down or at least on its side because I've got those pocket holes that I drilled into the bottom of the tabletop and that's also to attach the trim. So this trim's not going anywhere. Now the pocket holes that are on the underside of the tabletop are three quarter inch pocket holes. So I'm using one and a quarter inch pocket hole screws to attach it. All right, I'm attaching the second trim piece. I'm using my clamp for this to get the trim flush with the tabletop. It just makes it easier. Okay, and now I'm just going to add the rest of the trim pieces the exact same way. Oh my gosh, how did that happen? Alvin, stop! Alvin! 